Welcome back to Night Talk. Get to the point. I'm Lenny Miguel. So you're watching the Pittsburgh Cable News Channel. We're talking about what we need to do to move urban America forward and thus all of America forward in 2015 as we reflect upon 20 years since the Million Man March. I want to go ahead and reintroduce my Get to the Point panel. I have Dr. Michael Quigley to my right. I have Reverend Rodney Adam Lyle to my left and I have Todd Pipkin from the Male Leadership Academy in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Todd, I want to bring this question to you first. We keep talking about change, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. What does change look like in 2015? And once change comes to institutions that say they want change, but doesn't necessarily really want change, what does that dynamic look like? Because everybody wants peace and harmony until you have to give up some power, until you have to admit some flaws, until you have to sit there and say, we're going to do some things differently. For example, you sit there and say, well, we want prosperity for everybody, that's great. But now we're going to say that these jobs go to these communities because they've been locked out for 40 years. Then all of a sudden there's pushback. What does change look like when those type of uh, conflicts come up? Well, the people have to be willing to do it. I mean, change, change is uncomfortable. None of us like change. But when that doesn't transpire, when you see mm -hmm. one aspect of a community wanting change and another aspect mm -hmm. of the community not wanting change, how does that process go in order to get us to where we need to get to or else we're going to continue to spin our wheels. Right. I think as a community as a whole, if the African American community, if it's Pittsburgh, if it's Charlotte, they want change, we have to come collectively together. I'm born and raised here. That has always been an issue in Pittsburgh. How will the black community come together, black churches, nonprofits, the educational, higher ed? How will those people in positions of power, economics, African Americans be able to come together and say, you know what, we don't want to have this anymore? And how do we help the Homewood Brushians to be the first model? How do we help the North Side? How do we help Northview Heights? How do we help the West End? That has to come together from a group of people saying, we're tired of it. And then there's the, after that group comes together, what then is the plan? Well, there are times when that, that urgency, that sense of urgency mm -hmm. can be dismissed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, and I agree with you, Brother Todd, that uh, we, we need to collect, uh, mm -hmm. collectively approach this, 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 this issue. Uh, but change typically comes at a pace that's palatable for those that are in power. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that we need to do as a group, as a collective, mm -hmm. is to focus our energies on policy change because yes. policies uh, yes. outlast personality. And that's what I want to put, that's what I want to throw out there as well because even the definition of change, and I'm going to challenge mm -hmm. this right here, right now. Even the definition of change, whether it's here in the city of Pittsburgh or it's in urban cities like Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. change usually means get the guns off the street. Yeah. And that's as far as it goes. It doesn't usually mean get more jobs in the communities. It doesn't usually mean increase the quality of schools to make sure that these individuals can get jobs, that they can buy homes, buy new cars, sustain their families. It's usually we need change because we're having too many shootings. What is it going to take, Reverend Lyle, and you, your church is right in home with Brushton, mm -hmm. so you're a prime example of this. What is it going to take to have community leaders, political leaders, whatever it may be, black, white, other, to change the definition of change so that quote unquote change can really mm -hmm. find roots. I'm gonna tell you something, I'm gonna tell you what it's gonna take. A part of what it's going to take is that even people of faith who are particularly Christian have to realize that if we can't even bring our own brothers and sisters yes. along, mm -hmm. then we've gotta find the right coalition to do it. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that we all, even people of faith, are frustrated with the, the sort of ineffectiveness yeah. even of the church. Yeah. But let me tell you something, a part of my frustration about where we are 20 years later has caused me to form a partnership with Victor Muhammad of Moss 22 at Wilkinsburg, to find a brotherhood and sisterhood with Jewish brothers and sisters yeah. who are like mine and like attainment. So a part of the change has to be who are the coalition? Who are the justice loving people? Who are the people who see the larger problem? Now I would love to be able to say that we we should be able to do this just as African Americans, mm -hmm. but the reality is I think for me is with 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 what I'm seeing, we have to be able to get it done and skin this cat another and way. Pastor, and I, I agree because I look again and I go back to the Melody Academy of Charlotte. It was a co it was a collective group of all types of people. 
and they saw the same vision and saw the unjust that was going on in the African American community for males and decided, how can we help you? If it was NASCAR, it was the Foundation of the Carolinas, if it was Coca-Cola, they said, what can we do to help? So I think I totally agree that we have to collectively get a group of people, black, white, Hispanic, whatever it may be, to be able to say, how can we make that, how can we help you to make that change? Because not just one group of people can do it. Because it collectively, you need everyone to try to help you uh, to be able to make change. And I, I think that's really critical a point. I think sometimes we look at doing this for African Americans, but there are others who agree that this is not right. And before you go to you, Dr. Quigley, I just want to summarize that. It took a society to create some of these conditions. It's going to take a society to, to turn change. around yes. some of these conditions, Dr. Quigley. So I, 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 in addition to that, I think that we also need to be institution building. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need to yeah. be building commissions. Mm -hmm. We need to sure. be building not just task forces mm -hmm. that have yeah. a specific finite kind of objective, mm -hmm. but commissions that ha are long-standing into perpetuity mm -hmm. that can push this work forward. And it you. does not have to be uh, one particular ethnic group that yes. drives that. Even Malcolm, when he came back from his holy pilgrimage yeah. to Mecca, developed the, uh, the, the, the OAU. Sure. And, and, and that was a collective of anyone who mm -hmm. was interested in injustice, mm -hmm. whether they were black, white, brown, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, I think that we also, and I keep going back to the young men in the streets that we're trying to do this work for. And I'm not a man of the cloth, but I believe in 1 Corinthians 13, yeah. 4 through 13 right, that yeah. teaches us how to love. love that's right. And we can't come at these young men nope. trying to mm -hmm. tell them that they're wrong yes. for living the way that they are. Right. We have to come at them with love. But yeah. it, it, what, what, and I guess the challenge that before we go to break, even the definition of love has to change because if they feel like we love them and our love is going to tell them to put a gun down and that's pretty much it, that's not enough. That's if they right. don't see us stand up for them, if they don't see themselves getting opportunities and they don't see people standing in the way in the of make of basically the interference between them getting in trouble, them going down a, a path that mm -hmm. continues generational poverty versus something new, then they're not going to change anything at all, which then goes to this, and I'm going to come back with this when we come back from break. What does that change look like? We're already talking about the types of things that need to transpire, but what type of discomfort will we go through as Americans mm. while that change is coming into place? And what are we willing to deal with? We'll talk about that next on Night Talk Get to the Point. Mm. Mm.